All right, welcome to our football press conference uh, ahead of Bull Media Day. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, uh, and then we'll open it up to questions here in the room. Just a reminder to turn your cell phones to vibrate off or mute. Coach? Uh, appreciate everybody coming out and cover Penn State football. Uh, literally just landed back in State College. I've uh, been everywhere. Uh, the last two weeks I've literally been, been everywhere. So uh, excited to be back, see the family, get around the guys again. Um, really, you know, talk a little bit, obviously, about Utah uh, and, then, and then get into questions. I don't really have anything else to cover with, it, uh, cover with you guys before that. Uh, but pretty cool first ever matchup against Utah again in 2022. It's, there's not too many things like that that you get to say first time ever. So I think that's a really cool thing for, for not only Penn State and Utah, but, but the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Um, Kyle Whittingham, I've known for a long time. I got a ton of respect for him. He's been at Utah um, for almost 30 years. Um, we both at one point were at Idaho State. I think he was at the defense. He was the defense coordinator. I think uh, at Utah when when I was at Idaho State. I remember seeing him on on the road recruiting a number of times. But he's done a great job. You know, you watch him. I think if you're a, a true football guy and you watch him, um, that's that's what you know a team is supposed to look like. In in my opinion, uh, offense, defense, special teams complimentary football there, a tough uh, football team there, a physical football team. Uh, they know how to win games in a lot of different ways. Uh, so I got, a, I got a bunch of respect uh, for them. Kyle Ludwig, I've also known for a long time, their offensive coordinator. Um, when I was the offensive coordinator at Maryland, um, uh, Andy actually came and um, visited and uh, we, we actually spent some time together talking talking football. He's been doing it a long time. He's uh, you know really respected nationwide. He's worked a ton of different places and he's done a really good job at the University of Utah with their with their offense. Uh, Cam Rising, their quarterback. Um, I think that play in the USC game kind of exemplifies who who he is. You know when he got when he got Knocked pretty good. His helmet flew off. He jumped right up, put his put his helmet back on. I was actually at his high school last week, um, but I got a ton of respect for him. He's been really productive. Um, you know, obviously MVP of the Pac-12 title game. Uh, their tight end number 87, uh, Thomas Yasmin. Um, you know, their tight ends really make their offense go. They, they use their tight ends in a probably similar way that we do. Um, their left tackle, number 71, Braden Daniels, and then their running back, number two, Micah Bernard. So they got a bunch of different guys that can hurt you in a ton of different ways. And offensively, they're multiple enough to cause people issues. Morgan Skelly, uh, Scaly, excuse me, their defensive coordinator, uh, been there 17 years, been at Utah for 17 years. Um, and they've probably led uh, with their defense over, over Coach's time there. Um, been very, very consistent, been very, very disruptive. You know, and they got a bunch of guys that, that were impressed with linebacker number 21. Um, Karen A. Reed, uh, defensive end number 81. Connor O'Toole, defensive tackle number 58. Uh, junior Tafuna. Um, safety number 11, R.J. Hubert. And linebacker number 20, uh, Lander Barton. And then uh, linebacker number three, Mohamed uh, Diabate. So uh, they got some really good players. Uh, the Diabate kids, a transfer from Florida. Uh, but they are big, and they are physical, and they are tough, and they are disruptive. And then on special teams, Sharif Shah, uh, defense, excuse me, their special teams coordinator. Uh, Sharif Shah, uh, the guy that kind of stands out for us on special teams, kind of an unusual body type as a punt returner. Uh, but Devon uh, Vele is their punt returner and do a good job. So, um, you know, I, I wish I could speak uh, in more detail about these guys at this time. But to be honest, we've been on the road for the last two weeks. Last week, um, you know, we were back in last weekend, we were back in town, but it was mainly uh, practice and official visit. It was more of a, 
as you guys know, like program development type practice, like a spring ball type practice where we hadn't really got into our opponent uh, in great detail at that point. So uh, this will be a busy weekend, you know, getting caught up on film and those types of things. Um, we will practice tonight. We were supposed to practice today, but classes got canceled yesterday. Some exams got pushed to today uh, during our practice time. So we ended up having to pu push our practice time back or we would have missed too many guys from practice. So we'll practice today. Tomorrow will be off because of graduation. So appreciate you guys being here and I open up the questions. Mark. Hi, I'm James. Mark, you too. Sorry, this is a little loud. Hey, as you indicated, it's a really important recruiting time. How do you balance uh, this next week or so uh, leading up to signing day with finishing up this class, looking ahead to the next class, and then also you have the, the portal to be monitoring? Yeah, I think the next class will become more of a priority after this first signing day because we'll have, we'll have more time at that point um, to focus on next class, to, to you know, focus a little bit more on the transfer portal um, and go from there. But, um, but balance is kind of the, the key word, you know, it's, it, you're running in a thousand different directions, um, you know, making sure our guys finish strong academically, uh, obviously make, making sure that we're doing everything we can for bowl prep. Um, God forbid you go buy a Christmas present. Um, you know, all those types of things, just running in a thousand different directions, making sure our guys are in a good place here. Um, you know, making sure our staff is, is, you know, flying all over the country and safe and, and doing what they need to do. Uh, and then finishing in, in recruiting. There's, there's literally not, not enough hours in the day. Um, last week, last week was a grind because then we also had LeVar Arrington being inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame, which was awesome. Uh, what wasn't awesome is the day, the two days before flying out there to be there for LeVar's uh, induction, which I thought was really important. Um, my flight was at 510. The next day the flight was at 510. And then after LeVar's deal, I had to fly from there to Florida, so my flight was at uh, 4, 4.10. A. Uh, yeah, a.m. I wish it was p.m. And then I got to the airport and the plane had broke down, so I sat there till 9. And luckily, my old buddy Dabo Sweeney came in and he was going to the, he was going to the Orange Bowl press conference in Fort Lauderdale. So I said, Dabo, can I please jump on this plane with you? So me and him flew out to Florida, which allowed me to get out there. So Dabo and Clemson, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Dabo, I think we'll, we'll rub this in and hold it over my head for the next 20 years. But um, I think balance is the right word. It's just, it's a crazy, crazy time. Um, and it's gotten crazier with everything that's going on in college football. Rich? Well, Mark, Mark took my question. And but I'll follow up with this one. Can you tell us what the status is of Olu and Caden Wallace for the Rose Bowl? Yep. So, as you guys know, you know there, there's still some time, and there's no reason uh, to rush these guys. And I haven't had a chance to sit down um, and, and talk with them and, and where we're at. But right now, we are planning uh, for Olu and Caden to be available. That could change. Um, you know, we'll see how this thing goes. Uh, we're not going to rush either of them back. It'll all be based on where the medical staff feels that they are and, and where these guys, you know, feel they are uh, both, both physically and mentally. But, um, you know, we're planning, and I'll, I'll even throw a bonus one in there, uh, Olu, Caden, Kivon. You know, we're expecting to have all three of those. So we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. Tyler. Hey, James, how are you today? Good, how are you? Doing well. Um, we just had Pat Kraft uh, for a while before you, and something I asked him was what he's learned about you going through the season, going on the road with you guys. <laughs> and I'm curious to kind of pose that to you about Pat and, and what you experienced and what you kind of picked up from him being, he called it embedded with you guys for much of the season. Yeah, so it really, I can speak in a lot of ways about Pat um, and Dr. Ben DePuti. Um, both of them, their energy is contagious. It is contagious. Um, I never know if I should say Neely or Dr. Ben I want to be, I want to be as respectful as possible of her position. 
But she spoke at the banquet last week on Sunday, the football banquet, and she crushed it. Um, she just so positive, um, so energetic, and she just had the whole room kind of eaten out of her hand. And um, and Pat's the same way, you know. They they love what they do. Um, I think both of them, you know, it, you never know when you take a new job, right? You, you take a new job and you don't know what it's going to be like. And I think both of them are very, very happy at Penn State and being in Happy Valley. And and Pat's been great, you know. Uh, me and Kevin Threlkill, as you know, is kind of my, my right-hand man. And we got to change our approach because we're wasting time in meetings because we'll go to them a lot of times with things you know, that we think we need to do, um, you know, things that are going on in college football, and we kind of put on our sales hat of why we need to do it. And, um, you know, we don't really need to do that. We just, you know, talk about kind of what's going on, uh, you know, why these things are important, and, and you know, they kind of see it the same way. Um, and that's not, just, that's not just with football. I've been hearing it, you know, from, from all the coaches. Um, so it's been great, you know. Um, on the plane rides, on the away games, he's, he's sitting right there next to me. Um, it's been it's been it's been really good, and he is passionate about Penn State and Penn State athletics and all the sports. Um, I think he's going to have a uh, strong voice, and I think he's going to be vocal from a Big Ten perspective in terms of representing um, our our school. Um, and I think you're going to see it on a national level as well, you know. So it's been really good. He was out there as well uh, for um, uh, for Lavar's induction. And it was kind of cool. We were taking pictures, and it was Lavar and Brandon Short specifically. And and Pat goes, "Well, hold on a second. I got to get in this picture." You know, three of us Big Ten linebackers, uh, and it looked a little different. He looked a little different than others guys, but but it's it's been really good. It really has. And and to be honest with you, Vinny has as well. You know, uh, which is which is like Pat's right hand man. He works specifically with football. Um, it's been really good. It's been it's been really good. And I think you know the word embedded is I think. I think probably a really good word for it. I was a little worried about him on the sideline, you know, uh, but that hasn't been an issue. Um, but he's, I think he is passionate about Penn State athletics and, and also Penn State football, which is great. James, <clears throat> right in front of you, the transfer portal window specifically, has it worked or has it been as effective as you thought it would be? Has it been different than you thought it would be? And then when you talk about uh, a lot in the past and just now about alignment with the administration and everything, have you been able to get the things done you need to make transfers uh, an easier reality at this point? So the first thing I, I think with the transfer portal and the window, I think a lot of things that that happen and that the NCAA, um, you know, comes up with, I think probably in theory, you know, makes sense. But as always, I don't know if there's enough conversation going on with the actual practitioners. Um, but I, yeah, I think, I guess in theory, it, it, it makes some sense. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, the transfer process, you know, I think, you can have all the conversations you want uh, beforehand, and and when it hits, it it's different. And I just think the pace at at which things happen, you know, specifically to athletics, and and then obviously in more detail about football, it's just a very different pace. I mean, literally, you know, you could you could get a phone call from a kid that's been on the fence. And then you get a phone call at 12 o'clock at night and he's ready to jump and you better have the answer because now if you don't give him the answer once, now he may, wakes up in the morning and he has second thoughts because you haven't given him a direct answer. So it's just things happen fast. So uh, you know, we're still kind of working through those things. There's a lot of different moving parts. Andrew. Hey, Coach. Kind of back here under your favorite light in the corner. Uh, kind of dovetailing off Greg's question, um, you brought up the pace. I'm just wondering, do you feel that the December busy schedule needs to change because it's kind of chaotic not only for yourself, but also the college athletes and also high school athletes that may be falling through the cracks because falling through the cracks, excuse me, because you don't know what your roster management is 
and everything is just crowded in the six weeks, coaching changes, transfer portal, early signing day, things like that. You talking about with the early signing period? Yeah, just this entire six week stretch where there's a lot of coaching changes, the signing period, it just seems like everything is crowded in there. Does the NCAA need to change that schedule? Are you saying because of the early signing? Because periods? of everything combined. Signing, transfer portal, guys. I guess jumping. what I'm saying is really the discussion is what's changed to make it more. Because it's always been like this. There's always been coaching changes. Well, I guess There's it would be. There's always been signing day. There's always been bowl practices. There's always been things. The thing that's magnified it is the earlier signing period is, is I guess, what I'm asking. Yeah, yes. Um, well, they just changed it, so you know I don't necessarily see them changing it again. Um, you know, but the early signing period has essentially become their signing period for for most people. Um, I, I think the biggest thing I'm probably concerned about um, is the number of guys you know going into the transfer portal. And then also how that is impacting high school students. And then the other thing was when you added an extra year because of COVID, but you only expanded the scholarship limits for one year, you just basically took a, a bunch of opportunities away from, from high school kids because uh, there's just less scholarships available out there. So it is... Um, it's interesting, um, you know, I think obviously everybody always focuses on the, the high, high profile, the most elite recruits, and it's usually always gonna work out for those guys. Uh, but there's a ton of other guys that, that I worry could be, you know, left in, in some tough spots. So, um, you know, to, but to answer your question, if I, th if I think I'm understanding your question correctly, I think the what reason it feels that way is because we move the signing day up and you know our I think I heard I think you guys have heard me talk about this before you know I was in the SEC at the time when this discussion was really first going about and the discussion was let's have an early signing day but let's not change anything else um, the problem is once they change the early signing day then they change the visits allowed for earlier visits because they said they had to create access and things like that but you know, for what we discussed is the kid that was going to go to Penn State and always was going to go to Penn State, let that guy sign. But don't change anything else um, in the model. But, but once we did, it's, it's created all these other things. James, uh, 10 wins, Rose Bowl. When you're out traveling around or talking to recruits or portal, have you seen the tangible benefits of – that momentum, the 10 wins, the Rose Bowl, just all the positive uh, momentum that the program, are you able to experience all of that on, on a tangible basis? And then a second part of that is what is, what is this meant for you? What is this season meant for you bouncing back after a couple of trying years? Yeah, so I think nationally you, you feel it a little bit more, you know, when you're out traveling and talking to, you know, old school football coaches and things like that, I think, I think, Yes. Um, you know, me personally, I, I, I would say, no, I, I think this is kind of who really we've been. Um, you know, obviously the last two years, um, and I know everybody dealt with COVID. I think COVID affected us. Uh, but this is really who we've been, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's been um, my expectation and, and our expectation and our players' expectation. Um, but, but I understand your point. But, yeah, I, I probably feel it out, um, you know, on the road recruiting. High school coaches are, are very, um, you know, they, they respect how not only the record but also how our team is played. Uh, you hear it from other coaches, other college coaches, NFL coaches, whatever it may be. Um, but, yeah, you, you, you feel it on the road. It's, it's obviously a, a, a different uh, different conversations and things like that are going on. And then obviously with us, you know, recruiting out in California and everywhere in between, um, you know, obviously you know, with the Rose Bowl, you, you hear that a little bit more too. Pat. Hey, James, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. At this point, it doesn't seem like you've got many guys opting out of this game. Is it because it's the Rose Bowl? Is it because these guys want to play one more game together? Why do you think that is? Again, probably similar 
answer. This is who we've been. I mean, in my 12 years as a head coach, I'd never had an opt-out until last year. Um, part of it, it, again, I think it goes back to the leadership of our captains this year. That was a big part of our conversation uh, you know, before the season started uh, with, with our captains and, and what their expectations were and what their standards were and what mine were as well. Um, and really the way, in my mind, the way we've built it at Penn State, there's really no reason to opt out. Um, you know, we will, we will be flexible with all of our guys. Uh, I want our guys to, to be as successful as they possibly can. I want the bowl experience to be a great experience. And we'll work with our guys. So there's, there's really no reason to opt out. Um, and that goes back to communication with the players and the parents and things like that. So, um, you know, I remember all the way back with Saquon in the Fiesta Bowl. I had a conversation with him and his family about, about that game. Um, because he was getting some some people advising him to opt out of the game. So, um, again, I you know I look at this season more as getting back to who we are, and um, you know, you know the last two years and specifically last year, to your point, uh, was probably um, an outlier. Hey, James, over in the corner here. Um, with the two early road wins that you guys got, how important do you think? That was for setting the tone for the whole season and ultimately ending up in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, early wins are important. Uh, middle of season wins are important. Late season wins are important. Um, they're all important. I mean, I think that's when I, I go that one and O mentality. And you know, sometimes people get frustrated. You know, whether it's fans, especially of other schools or media. You know, um, you know, at the end of the day, when you when you beat uh, what people would say is a big opponent like Auburn on the road, you know, that had a different feel to it. But I can, I can guarantee you, you know, um, you lose to somebody you're not supposed to lose to that, that, that has a, that has a, you know, a significant impact as well. So um, they're all important. We try to emphasize them that way as much as we can, although they hear different messages from, from everybody else. And then what we try to do as much as we can is reinforce and showing our guys um, how you can't take it for granted and you better you better prepare the best you possibly can and dot every I and cross every T because every week, whether it's college or the NFL, there are teams losing to teams that they're not supposed to lose to. So we just we try to illustrate that we, the best we can um, and make sure that we're taking the right approach as coaches and the players as well. We have time for two more. We'll go Ben and then John. James, the transfer portal at the quarterback position seems like a tough sell, especially with things as they are at current. It seems like you would need another quarterback, but maybe one of the better quarterbacks that you could get is the guy that just left. How do you sell that position to a transfer portal guy, or do you not? Am I just wrong? And, and three is enough. Yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd prefer to have more than, than three. There's no doubt about it. But I think if you look across the country, you know, whenever you're in a situation where your starter is a sophomore or less, to your point, it's it's a hard sell. Um, it, it really is a hard sell. Um, you know, sometimes you can convince an, an older player um, that just wants to be a part of a big time program and part of a special experience uh, to come as as more of a backup, a senior backup, a veteran backup. Um, you know, sometimes you can find that, but more times than not, the guys that you're going to want, um, you know, want to go somewhere to play and be the guy and, and compete. So, you know, that's always a challenge. You know, when you're starting a true freshman, a redshirt freshman. And you may start a true freshman and have five quarterbacks on your roster, but then right after the season ends, your, your room's going to change you know, dramatically. So um, you know, we've had some conversations you know, early on as things started to play out. You know, does that mean we try to sign two quarterbacks in this class or whatever it may be? We try not, you know, we try to not you know, ever box ourselves in you know, when we're talking to recruits and their parents. Uh, I'm a big under promise over deliver guy. Um, so what you try not to do is say, okay, we're going to sign three defensive ends in this class. 
you, once you say that, then you sign four and, and people are upset about it. So for me, I always say, if, if we're expecting to sign three, I'm always saying four. I'm always going to say one more. Um, just to just to try to explain, there's going to be some flexibility. There's going to be some things that happen on your roster that you're not expecting, um, and it's easier to kind of address that on the front end as much as you can. But I think your your point is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Here, James, on your left. Uh, you mentioned Lavar's Hall of Fame induction ceremony a couple times. Given how busy you are, why was it important for you to be there for Lavar? And then additionally, with Brandon Short there, I think I saw Wally was there. What was it like to be around that group of lettermen and, and kind of just hear their stories and, and be in that moment? Yeah, there was a ton of guys out there that came out for for Lavar's um, for Lavar's induction, which was good. It's an event, to be honest with you, that I, I go to pretty much every year. Um, it's it's a who's who of college football event. It, it was obviously a lot more convenient when it had been in New York for a long time at the National Football Foundation. Um, you know, almost all the ADs are there. A good percentage of the college football coaches are there. And then on top of that, when you're at a place like Penn State, it seems like we have a player being inducted almost every year. You know, so that that helps as well. Um, you know, but on top of that. You know, Lavar has been, you know, Lavar has been a, a vocal supporter of 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 the university and and the athletic department and and the football program and, and to be honest with you, specifically me. He's been he's been phenomenal. And you know, <clears throat> sometimes I'll call Lavar for some perspective. Sometimes he'll call me, you know, with some perspective. And it's all it's always good to hear. So. Um, you know, it's always important to kind of be at those events and, and support Penn Staters. Uh, but but lavar has been lavar has been outstanding really since we arrived here. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, guys. We'll start our coordinators at 12:05 with Stacy Collins.